Hi everyone, Will Helliwell here, aka Notion Dad. Today I wanted to do a quick run through of my new template, the project planning template. So this template will be used for small to medium businesses um, and small teams, and it allows you to plan your work that's coming up, to track any big projects that you've got, and to raise just little tickets or issues that you have with your projects. So let's dive in. So the first thing you'll see on this template is the how to use this template page. So that is a guide that covers everything on how to use all of the parts of the template. So what would happen is somebody would raise a ticket. Now this could be a client that you've got, or it could be somebody on your team raising an internal ticket. So the best place for them to do that is either in this tickets master database or in the backlog. So we're going to go into the master database. Now I've raised this ticket for myself. You can do that by clicking new or clicking the drop down here. We've got a little template. So this ticket is already raised. We've got all of these different properties here and some of them are useful. Some of them you might find not so useful. This ticket that I've raised, it's got a title called film template video. Um, the reporter, that's me, that's automatically added in there. Um, we've got the client I've put as Notion Dad. So these, you can create new ones. So the product is my team workflow template, but you could add a new one in there. The ticket type, I've added that it's a video. That's what I'm working on at the moment. And the progress overview, I've set it to in progress. So that progress overview relates to these here. So we've got reopened, not started, in progress and completed. So I should say on this page here, it's gonna show all the tickets ever. Like this is your master database of all the tickets that exist. Every other page is gonna use this master database and show different views based on it. So if we go back into the ticket, we've got the progress overview. I've also made something called progress stage. So again, you can kind of call this whatever you want, but the progress stage is a more like in-depth view of where the ticket is. So it might be in progress, but we might want to put it on hold for some reason, or we're waiting on the client to do something. So you, again, you can add more things in there. So we'll remove those. Um, the due date. So this is obviously quite important. When do you want to get the ticket done by? So I've put the 2nd of July in there, but if I change it to the 1st of July, and let's include a time. So right now it is just come up to quarter to five. So let's say 16.40. So 4.40 p.m. You get these three little marks here saying that the ticket is overdue. So that's useful just to be able to see, oh, that ticket's overdue. Somebody better look at that. And if we change it to 5 p.m., that will go away because it's now no longer overdue. Um, priorities, you can add P1s. I don't really use those, but they're useful. Uh, story point estimate. This can be the number of points you want to give a ticket, or it can be the number of hours a ticket will take. Um, it's up to you again how you want to use that. So the whole thing about this template is it's very customizable. I've given you kind of an outline and you can use it exactly how it is right now, but you could also change loads of things about it. And that is one of them. So we've got this estimated hours. Um, that is just based on the story point estimate. So you might decide that if you give it let's say you give it 13 points then that is eight hours of work so it's got these little formulas in here so if points is 13 then hours can be let's say nine and that's how you change that bit if you want to change something in there so let's change that to 13 estimated hours now change to nine so the next important bit um, on here is the sprint so this is where you'd select the sprint that you want now we're gonna to go to the sprints page and I'll explain a bit more. It's in here. So sprints enable you to track the work that you're doing this week. And we're assuming sprints are a week long, but you can again, make them however long you want. So track the work that you're doing this week, but also plan the work in the upcoming weeks. And the reason behind the points and the hours is so that you could see how many estimated hours there are gonna be in that week's worth of work. So let's say you know you've got, you know, three members of staff and that's 37 hours a week. So that's 90 plus 21, which is 111. Um, so let's say you've got, let's say you've got 100 hours um, worth of work in the week. You can see here, estimated total hours is set to eight. 
So you can quite happily know that you could get more tickets in there, assign more work, and you'll be okay. But if that went over the threshold, whatever you decide that will be, then you know that if any more work comes up, you can just turn around and go, no, we're too busy for that, we can't do it, put it in the next sprint. So to create a new sprint, we've got a number three down here. Tell you what, what we haven't done is let's sort it by the, let's sort it by the date range. And we want it to be descending. There we go. So now your sprint, your newest one is always going to be at the top. So if we click to open this, you can set some goals in there. The status, this is the one that is currently ongoing. I'm going to set that one to completed. So number three is ongoing. And you'll see we've got this little template button here. So if you click that, then that will just create some um, sprint retrospectives for you. So on a Friday afternoon, you can go in here and with your team, you can say, right, what went right, what can be improved, and you can go through all of that as a team. And it's good to look back on, see, did you hit your goals? Did everything work as expected? So this is sprint number three. If you wanted to create a new one, you go into here, hit new sprint, and then you add the dates onto there. So we've reached the point that somebody has raised the ticket, they've put it in the current sprint, and they've assigned it to somebody. So if you are logged in, as I am here, there's a section at the bottom called your tickets. So you will see just the tickets that are assigned to you, and they must be in this week's sprint. So that's what the filter is doing there. We can have a look. My tickets are assigned to me, so that's whoever is logged in. And then you've got the sprint date is either within the past week, or it's the day, or the progress overview is set to reopened. So the reason we have that one is if this ticket, let's say you worked on it all week and then you finished it on a Friday and you're all happy with it, you go to the next sprint, this ticket isn't in that sprint anymore, but somebody tests your work, it's not quite right, they set it to reopened, it will still appear here whether it's in the sprint or not. So that's what that bit's for. Um, the next bit we wanna have a look at, let's go to the backlog. So the backlog is where you could make tickets and you don't have to assign them to anyone yet, they're just things you want to work on, things you want to do, and you don't have to add any dates or anything. So for a ticket to move out of the backlog, it needs to be added to a sprint and assigned to a person. Otherwise it'll stay here and it'll just sit there until somebody wants to work on it. So for this, I could assign it to me and let's add it to the sprint. So we're on sprint number three. And there we go, it vanishes from the backlog. If we go back to the main page, so now we're in the your ticket section, but it's not appearing here. So one thing you have to watch out of is the progress overview. Sometimes people don't set them or sometimes they don't use the template. So you don't have a progress overview on there. So your ticket is sitting in here. So we are going to set this to not started. There we go. So we can see that ticket hasn't been started yet, but it's in this week's sprint. So I know I have to do it this week and I'll get to it when I get to it. Right, the next section we want to have a look at. So we've done tickets, we've done the backlog, sprints, that's okay. This week's tickets, that is the same view as your tickets, except it will show everybody's tickets. That's the only difference there. Tickets and testing. So this one, these are all the tickets that have a progress stage. So remember that's the kind of more in-depth, um, in-depth bit of progress, where the progress stage is set to QA testing. So you've done your work, and you said, right, it's all finished. Can somebody test it, please? You put that on there. Whoever does the testing of your work can be in this view and go through the tickets and go, yep, yeah, this is all okay. I've checked all of that. Remove it from testing. And then it's removed from this view. It's done. Okay, the next one we want to have a look at. So we're almost there. We've got completed tickets. And that's pretty much the same as the tickets and testing. But that uses the progress overview where the progress overview is completed. Nice and simple on that one. Right, we'll do epics in a minute, I think. And um, the last bit we wanna do before then is gonna be the sprint carryover. So the sprint carryover is if you have been doing your work this week, but you didn't finish it. So you have to do the work next week. So what you can do is you can see all the tickets in here where you were in a current sprint, but the work is not completed, basically. So these are in sprint number three. We're gonna, let's assume sprint number four exists already. Somebody's already made it. Actually, I'll tell you what, we can just make one here. So number four, there we go. 
We will add the work to sprint number four, which will be next week. You could then go into that number four there and you can add the date range onto it and do all of that stuff like we did earlier. So we've added it to sprint number four. So now we know, okay, this has moved. It, we worked on it in sprint number three and working on it in sprint number four. If we didn't start the work, so this one's not started and it's a Friday afternoon, then we could go in here and we go, okay, we're going to move it from sprint number three. We're going to add it to sprint number four. And so it's just in sprint number four. So that's just sort of a little guideline of how I like to work. So you can see that how many sprints the work took basically and see how many times you're kind of overestimating or underestimating the amount of work that you can do. So that is the sprint carryover. Now the next bit, epics. So epics are pretty cool. They are big, big bits of work. So with the epic, you can add lots of tickets to it. So I've got this epic called build a new team workflow template. That is what we're looking at here. So let's open it up. So the epic has got a created date that's automatic. It's got an end date, which is June 13th. Let's say the end date is going to be tomorrow because I should finish editing this video by tomorrow and then hours allocated and hours completed. So this is based on, let's open up a ticket from here. Story point estimate 0.5, estimated hours 0.5. That was that little formula that we had. It takes those numbers there and it calculates, okay, these are, this is the total number of hours or points, however you want to work, that all those tickets add up to. So this is the sum of all the estimated hours. And then hours completed, when you complete a ticket, then that gets ticked. And so I've completed 11 hours out of 11 hours. So basically I've done all the tickets. If I were to go, let's go back into that one. And let's say this one's not completed. Let's put it back to reopened. Now you can see there that my progress is now set to 95% because I've only completed 10.5 hours out of the 11. So we're going to go back to there. Cool. We've done the work. La la la. Completed. And then we get a nice little tick again saying this epic, this big project has been completed. So epics are quite simple, but they're really, really useful just to keep track of all your work in one place. Now, the very last part of this template is the knowledge base. So the knowledge base is useful. It's your internal wiki. And we have this little view at the top. And what this does is it shows any tickets that have the progress stage of to be documented. So if I do this one, create the sprint carryover page, you can see it's in testing and it's set to be documented. If something's set to be documented, we can go, cool, that needs to be documented. Let's do something about it. So we scroll down a little bit. We go to related to wiki. If we click in here, we can create a new page directly in here, or we can create a new wiki entry in here like this. And then we can link that to a ticket. So Let's uh, create the epics page. Let's link it to that one. So we search. And we hit on that one. And there we go. So now that um, new wiki entry is linked to create the epics page. We can go back into there and we go, okay, I've documented that. Boom, it removes it. And that is the template. You can see your tickets. You can see all of the tickets and you get an 11 page guide on how to use this, or of course you can go back to this video and have a look um, at all the sections, or of course get in touch with me. So I am on Twitter and Instagram at NotionDad, or you can send me an email, me at NotionDad.com, and I will reply and try and help out as much as I can. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the template, and I hope you get some use out of it. Um, yeah, get in touch write to me and let me know how you found it if you're using the template and it'd be really cool to see it like in action or let me know if there's anything you think I've missed out that I should add that'd be really interesting as well and I can always build on the template as we go so yeah thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video